Okay, okay, okay. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, the rare geek baby. And let me just apologize for the echo and if my voice is too low because I have to do this video from the garage, bro, because it's late at night there's no electricity and i was just like screw it man let's just do this video and everybody else is asleep and i definitely do not want to wake up my body because dude he has a short temper and i don't want to get kicked out of the house in this economy bro because i mean dude i don't want to get the only free meal ticket that i have taken away from me i need my mama's basement as much as i need oxygen you feel because this economy is not good for a man or anybody dude when you're homeless okay so welcome back to part three we're gonna do this man no electricity but i was like yo dude let's just do it in the garage surrounded by the mosquitoes man and i can swear i can almost hear the witches in the background but yo screw it let's just do this so yeah what are we gonna do so if you remember from part two we we left off dude what we did is we created what we called roof lines we talked about the ridge the hips and the 45 degree angle low i call it the 45 degree angle low but yo dude it's just getting this roof lines on point so up next like i told you what we want to do is create a layout drawing that engineers or whatever you do you you need to come up with before the, con the contractor starts their job on site or starts putting the roof together right so basically what the layout drawing does it shows the contractor the type of trusses and how these trusses are going to be laid you know so you feel like let me just give you a brief brief oversight of what this is this is what they call a gidda right and it's e it's called a gidda e whatever you call it this is a full span truss but then as you can see this doesn't make sense if you actually don't know the basic elements of a roof so you know what I was like bros I was like yo bros let's do the basic elements of a roof let's start with how a roof looks like and what are these trusses I'm talking about let's just see what these trusses are before we actually start placing them on the layout because we need to have a basics or we need to have knowledge of the basics and foundations before we actually engage in anything just like with your license bro what you do is you get the theory first before you do the application you gotta get your provision before you go on the road you feel me yeah man I'm talking to you and the voice is different today there's echo bro like I told you I'm in the garage and yo let me just say Thank you to everybody who watched the last video and thank you for the feedback. Thank you, Stanford. Dude, you're amazing. You gave me some amazing feedback. And guys, Rachel said she loves me too. So, dude, dude, I'm definitely sliding in that DM. You know what I mean? So, now, let's just uh, start doing the basics. Like what the video just said. I'm sorry if I took too long, but yo, dude, let's just do this. Okay. So, first up, first up, let's look at a truss okay or the elements of a truss so this is basically the truss or a roof truss this is how it's set up so with the truss you have the peak okay the peak called that kilimanjaro baby this is the topmost part of your truss or your roof this is you, whenever you see a roof right when there's the ridge right the topmost part is called a peak then when you have this what you have is you a truss is made up of like the basic truss is mostly three elements which are like in a triangle as you can see so this is basically the top cord what we have here right and then you have the bottom cord so the top cord there will be one and two and these are basically uh the same elements you just mirror them you know this top cord is just the same as this top cord you feel me all right and the other thing we have are the webs but this is more of an american term well in africa southern africa zimbabwe namibia south africa botswana we call these struts s-t-r-u-t-s these webs are called struts and the function of these webs 
or stress, right? Is you're gonna have your tiles or your asbestos resting on the top cord, right? And they'll be putting some load on the top cords, and then these webs then help to transfer the load from your roofing material, whether it's concrete tiles, asbestos, or anything, to the supports. Those are the supports that you see. These funny little items over there, bro. Funny little items. These are what we call these supports. Okay, so we talked about the top cord, the bottom cord, the supports, and the webs, aka the struts, baby. Okay, now we get, and also for any truss, there's what we call the overall span or what I term the effective span. So the span of a truss is the distance between one support to the other support, right? In this case, it will be the distance from one wall to the other wall. Let's just say this could be like five meters or anything, bro. It's anything you want. It all depends on your house, dude. It, it's, it's up to you. Then the other thing that's important when it comes to roofs is the pitch. What is the pitch of a roof? You know, when you get to a carpenter, they will tell you, dude, the roof is pitch, the twenty, the pitch is twenty-two, the pitch is thirty, the pitch is forty. Dude, all they're trying to say is the degrees, man, the degrees from the horizontal. This is the pitch, right? So some express it in degrees. Like I know from Sadak, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Botswana, and everything, they say like the pitch is twenty-two. That means the pitch is twenty-two degrees. You feel? And in the States, usually they go like the pitch is 1 in 20, the pitch is 4 in 1, actually, because these Americans start with the horizontal before they go vertical. So, unlike in Africa, we just say, or oh, the metric system, it's 1 in 12, for these guys, it's 12 in 1. You know, it's, it's kind of funny. I don't understand this, people. They just want to be different. And also, like I told you, we talked about the overhang, baby. The overhang. This is the part that extends. So, like I told you in the last part, this is usually 600 millimeters from the support. 600 millimeters from the support. I hope you get that. Okay, now let's move to part two. Because I was on the internet and I was looking for things and most of the things you find on the internet, bro, it's, the internet is like a buffet. But it's more like an American buffet. Because, dude, Americans always just put stuff there, man. I don't know what it is with metric system. Yo, people don't want to share information. Africans, Europeans, I don't know what's wrong with you, bro. We got to start sharing this information. So this is what they call the layout drawing. So you'll find African uh, layouts are more complicated than American layouts, right? With Americans, they like to simplify shit. I don't know. Actually, they like to complicate shit, but then they simplify some of them. I don't, I don't understand these people. So basically, this is the goal of an engineer. When you get a drawing from an architect, you want to produce something like this, which is very similar to what I have been showing you all this time. You see? But as you can see, mine is a little bit fancy. It's a little bit more complicated than, the, you know, the American way of um, this American trust layer. It's just, it's just, it's just, I don't know, man. So now let's move to part three. <laughs> we have already learned about what is a truss and everything as well. But dude, like I told you, once you learn about that, you have to start with the gable roof. So basically this is the gable roof. So what I have is I have a layout. This is the layout. And then this is the 3D of the gable roof. And this is the 3D of the truss layouts. So like I told you, a gable roof is basically a roof that has a ridge line in the middle that spans from one extreme end to the other extreme end on the longer side. And what you have is you have two sides which are sloping from either direction and they just meet in the middle. You feel? This is basically that. So look there. On my drawings, this is normally the yellow line. What you see in as red here is on my AutoCAD, right? That's the yellow box, well, the overhang. And for the Americans, I don't know what it is, but in the metric system, dude, stick to 600. And these are the funny lines you see here. This is the representation of the trusses. 
this is the truss layout or the engineer's drawing so now that you have this on your screen can you now understand what we are trying to do when we are creating roof layouts so with the gable roof this is how the roof is supposed to look to everyone who sees the roof okay this is when the roof has clothes okay the house is clothed so when you strip it apart when you just like fillet the drawing bro you expose the trusses this is like the skeleton okay off the roof you gotta fillet the skin off whatever you want to talk about so with the gable roof this is how the trusses are arranged it's just uh, the same truss from this end to this end as you can see from this to this it's the same trusses so basically when you see this from the top i hope you did drawing because dude i can't explain how this right this right here ends up looking like this on the drawing but basically like i told you you just want to represent these trusses from above so this is how you represent these trusses on your drone so that when the guys get your drawing they're able to then erect these trusses from this side to that side according to your drawing they will be look what would they be looking at they'll be looking at the length of these trusses and the spacing between the trusses so like i told you it helps to create the ridge because the, the ridge shows the contractor way the peaks of the trusses will be okay let's just check on our time let's just check on our time 11 minutes we can definitely continue the other parts in the next video no funny intro i promise but then hey dude this is the basis of a gable like i was telling you let's just cut it at 15 so let's just go so the important thing is that you have your layout so this is the important thing so this is what you're striving to produce as an engineer or anybody else who does drafting or the draftsman and uh, this is what the contractor wants to do and this is what this plus this will produce so we have covered the gable roof what are other things i know i was supposed to move to four but let's just say common roof also this helps us to visualize better so as i told you this is basically this would be the truss but this is all the truss with just the top cords without the bottom cords without the bc the bc is missing for better visualization and as i told you this is the ridge unlike in the previous drawing where you had the truss let me just show you joined like this right this is just for representation but on an actual roof you have a parallel member running from one end and that end will be from this end to this end right where the trusses are nailed to and that parallel member is called the ridge right and also the top cords are also called common rafters okay the member that runs at an angle and rests on a wall plate is called a rafter i hope you understood that okay and the other member they put on top of the walls and where the rafter actually joins to before putting all its weight on the wall is called a wall plate okay i hope you understood that guys this one is not the best video that we have it's not really fun but yo that's it's all that's theory for you man theory is not that fun okay let's just uh right so there's a common roof let's just look at let's just go back all right all right all right and then there's a clear pick of a roof like i told you right this is to help you as i told you there you have the reach it's a power member man this is the gable wall. like i told you a gable roof just wall from the start let's just show you again this is the gable roof man just wall so this is what they call the gable wall. gable wall okay i told you so there you have the reach there you have the gable wall and this is like i told you the top cords of any truss okay they're called the rafters or what they call them the common rafters and i told you about the wall plate right this is where 
the common rafters first rest on before all their load is then transferred to the walls man so it's a wall plate just like a plate they put on top of the walls to receive the loads from the truss before they transmit it to the walls okay i hope you understand that i hope you understand that all these other things we don't need to worry about that i just want you to worry about the bridge the common rafters the wall plate and the gable wall don't forget the gable wall brother okay and okay we got that we got that down and also the gable roof like i told you rafter line the rise bro the rise the rise this is the distance from the peak to the bottom cord as you can see that is the rise i hope you can visualize it and as i told you pitch pitch baby pitch pitch in degrees okay or ratio of rise to span you feel rise to span that's how we do it in the metric system but you know these americans do it like span to rise i don't understand these guys but dude i understand americans you guys are amazing okay i won't be speaking like this been waiting for you guys because your lingo is amazing okay let's just check let's just check all right so 16 minutes we gotta cut the video and then just do it in part two man i don't want to have your attention span cut out so thank you man just watch out for part two i'm doing it right after this one